Hello all my truth seekers, welcome to the truth show. In this video, we'll discuss the primetime movie Master. I know it's been a while since this movie been released, but I've been meaning to make a video about this that outlines the embedded racism that still stains the world. This movie is so deep. Here we go again. I mean, this is the truth show and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the truth show. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. This movie stars Regina Hall, an excellent actress, and I'm a huge fan. In this movie, Master is the arresting debut feature from writer-director Mariama Diallo. It's a tale of racism and exclusion at an Ivy League college. But it's also a story about a good old-fashioned New England witch haunting. The two strands are tightly intertwined and suggestive of each other. But Diallo makes the connection between the non-transparent events sometimes to frustrating degrees. The tense, unsettling mood is consistent throughout every minute of the film. The hauntings are scary, but the microaggressions and twisted racial politics that turn every conversation into a minefield are more difficult still. Masters follows two black women navigating a new academic year at the fictional Ancaster College. Jasmine, played by Zoe Renee, is a wide-eyed first-year student from far away Tacoma, shy and coatless in her natural hair and plain clothes. Then there's Gail, played by Regina Hall, who's an established faculty member who has just been appointed as the college's first black master. Oh, yes. The institution equated term for a head of the house and a word heavy with uncomfortable echoes, if you know what I mean. Those echoes can be heard everywhere on Ancaster Gentile Historic Campus. Gail moves with pride into her new digs, a beautiful red brick lodge, but she does so alone and finds the drafty house filled with reminders of black servitude and subjugation. Jasmine, meanwhile, moves into a room that campus legends claim is haunted. A student died in the room decades ago, a death link to a curse placed on the school by Margaret Millett, a woman who was hanged for witchcraft on the site centuries earlier. It's said that Millett's ghost shows itself to one freshman every year and at the moment of her death at 3.33 a.m. Yes, takes a student with her to hell. That's the legend. Jasmine and Gail both start to see vague but sinister omens, maggots oozing from her rip in a painting, the face of some college grandee, and another portrait distorting into scream. These moments of classic horror imagery are chilly and repulsive. Quick images glide past these visions rather than jolting audiences with a jump scare. The characters puzzled and a nerve slide back into the routine of the campus life. But then unease comes with them. Master moves like a cat, stealthily and purposeful. The point is that alienation and dread are pervasive for these women in even the most ordinary encounters as they try to find a place for themselves within a bastion of white supremacy. Much like Jordan Peele's Get Out, this screenplay constructs scenes after scene of coded racial friction, alive to how racism can poison the, the well, blatant or subtle, malevolent or condescending inter and intraracial fraternities. Brothers scream the N-word in aggressive appropriation as they sing along to a rap song at a party. A black canteen server was pleasant. This is so common today. Listen to what I have to say. A black canteen server was pleasant and friendly to the white students, but regarded Jasmine with hostility. Yeah. Celebrating Gail's promotion, the white professors ask if they should call her Barack now. Uh huh. White students find a casual faculty with a black professor critical race theory reading of the Scarlet Letter. 
while Jasmine challenges it and gets marked down. Mm -hmm. That professor, Liv Amber Gray, becomes increasingly influential figure as the master stories brightens and deepens, though she remains strangely ambiguous. She's a friend, yeah, and comrade in arms to Gail, fighting for tenure. Jasmine files a complaint against Liv over the failing grade, complicating Gail's position as she tries to advocate for her friend and improve the school's dismal record for diversity. Somehow the system had turned the three women against each other, or at least, you know, their fates in a sticky ethical web when they only asked for seats at the table. Masters relentlessly on points in its attacks on white privilege but it's justified in that targeting. Within the film's surprisingly complex setup, the outright horror of the witch haunting is the bluntness instrument. It's used to ratchet up the sense of danger as Jasmine burrows deeper into the hostile territory, an ostracized by her classmates, and researches the earlier student death in her room. Honestly, the haunting doesn't always mesh with the real social horrors she faces but it does allow hornsby to frame some strikingly creepy shots breaking up the astral compositions with walls of red slashes of black meanwhile they're they are layered metaphorically images that are suppler but no less lingering like the shadow of a janitor mopping the floor behind gail and jasmine as the delicately discuss her complaint against Liv. These black women are still cleaning up the mess generations after the maid whose memory haunts Gail's house. Yeah. And Jasmine Zoe, Renee, gives Master its naked emotional center, but it, its anchor is the terrific Regina Hall, as quietly magnetic here. Although the hunting is never explicitly linked to the college grotesque and enshrinement of privilege and bigotry, they inspire similar dread. Both, after all, are about history reaching into a present and pulling people back into darkness. Some of these storylines that are used are real life events and people. This racial injustice are still very present in colleges, heck, in schools today. The movie gave an inside look at the constant struggle and devastating backstories. You see, Liv, who was running against Gail, turns out to be white who changed her face and her race to become pro-black, but she only did it so she can get a foot in and to regain her tenure. She lied about her race. She lied about her history. And she only pretended to be black, but still underlyingly of white supremacy. She didn't care about black students. She wanted to rewrite the history. And that's where the friction comes in at. To watch more, to learn more, I have the link below, but go check out this movie on Prime. The link is below. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Hit that bell to get notifications when I do post my videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.